Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Monday, August 31st, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So today we're gonna look at a search being conducted on the former Worley property by the FBI and the Fulton County Sheriff. Plus, a Bowling Green State University employee is in some hot water after being accused of making some racist remarks online. But before we get into any of those top headlines today, I actually want to get you up to speed on the latest coronavirus data. So today, there have been 895 new cases of coronavirus reported compared to the 21-day average of 1,020. There have been 10 coronavirus-related deaths with that average at 22. Hospitalizations are coming in at 59 compared to 83, and seven new ICU admissions were reported today compared to that average of 13. And something to keep in mind, I say this almost every Monday, but just to be safe, uh, data coming in on a Monday tends to be a little bit lower due to a lag in reporting from over the weekend. So generally, we get a better picture come midweek, but that is what's being reported so far. And the United States has now surpassed 6 million cases of coronavirus, according to a tally by Johns Hopkins University. California has the highest reported COVID-19 cases, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, with more than 693,000 cases as of Sunday afternoon. That's followed by Florida with more than 612,000 cases and Texas with 606,000 cases. Now, the global cases have topped 25 million on Sunday, with the U.S. leading the count, followed by Brazil with 3.5 8 million and India with 3.5 million. And as we've been hearing from the beginning, for most people, the new coronavirus causes mild or moderate symptoms like fever, cough, and shortness of breath. But for some, especially older adults and people with existing health problems, it can cause a more severe illness, including pneumonia and even death. The CDC said the best way to prevent getting sick or spreading COVID-19 is by washing your hands often, uh, avoiding close contact with individuals, and wearing a face mask when around other people. But a vaccine might not be too far away. Leaders with the Department of Health and Human Services said they feel very good about the number of volunteers offering to take part in U.S. coronavirus vaccine trials. Two of the six COVID-19 vaccine makers, Moderna and Pfizer, are in phase three of trials, which require about 30,000 participants each. And on Friday, HHS leaders said the agency has almost half of the volunteers needed. The push for volunteers and a vaccine is part of President Trump's Operation Warp Speed program, which is designed to get a vaccine to the American people by January 2021. Part of the effort involves manufacturing vaccines before they are even approved for use by the Food and Drug Administration. And then once a vaccine is approved by the FDA, it will be able to be distributed to the general public. And right now, manufacturing is underway for three potential vaccines and three additional facilities are being set up. And we will, of course, keep you updated with any new developments. And here's a bit of uplifting news out of our state. Camp Wynoa is getting some love from Ohio's own Drew Carey. The Cleveland native turned to Twitter on Saturday announcing his plan to donate some money to the Summit County Camp while asking his 591,000 followers to do the same. I'm about to donate to this cause, Carey tweeted. It's to help a summer camp I worked at in the late 70s. If you can, please join me. Carey got involved after Camp Wynoa launched a fundraising campaign in an effort to offset the financial impact caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The camp's digital media coordinator remembered that Carey had been a counselor and sent him a tweet with their campaign video attached, and her boldness paid off. Carey donated $5,000, and the camp reportedly saw an uptick in donations after his tweet. Their goal is to raise at least $50,000, so hopefully the publicity from Carrie helps them out a bit. And here's some good news for all you Jeepers out there. Thursday marks the reveal of the 2021 Jeep Wrangler 4XE. It's a plug-in hybrid and the return of the Wagoneer, which was last produced in 1991. The new Wagoneer is scheduled to go into production in the second quarter of next year. The Jeep has released a few teaser photos of the new Wagoneer, including its new glass roof and a shiny chrome-filled interior color scheme kind of futuristic. The vehicle will have three rows of seats and is expected to be built on the same chassis as the Dodge Ram 1500. The SUV will come in both Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer models. And the Toledo-built Wrangler 4XE is expected to offer up 31 miles of electric-only driving. It's incredibly quiet due to being plug-in powered. According to Motor Trend, the Wrangler 4XE will be built at the Toledo Assembly Plant, while the Toledo Machining Plant will make the plug-in's power module, install the software, and conduct final testing before the units are sent to the vehicle assembly plant.
The company has bragged that the new electric Wrangler is quiet enough to sneak up on the outdoors, saying drivers will experience less sound, more nature with the plug and play off roader. And a Bowling Green State University employee is on paid administrative leave after he was accused of using racist and violent language on a social media thread on Friday. That employee, Kevin Peridon, is on paid administrative leave pending the outcome of an investigation into the incident. The comments were screen grabbed during a Facebook Live of the Martin Luther King Jr. speech memorial on 13 ABC's page, and then they were posted on the official BGSU page in an effort to bring it to the university's attention. According to to his social media profile, Paradon is a groundskeeper for Bowling Green State University. And today at noon, there was a vigil and protest held outside Bowen Thompson Student Union to speak out about this kind of language. And university officials have voiced support for all of those who decide to protest peacefully. And today, FBI officials and Fulton County Sheriff's Office began a search of the former property of James Worley. He's the man who was convicted of killing Sarah Joggin. Now, Worley was sentenced to death in this case, and his execution was scheduled for June 3rd, 2019, but a lengthy appeals process has continued to push this date back. It's not exactly clear what is being looked for at the property, but a release states this. The FBI's evidence response team is on scene to assist in collection of any evidence if there is any located. The investigation into Mr. Worley continues and no further information can be discussed at this time. If we do learn anything new, we will continue to keep you updated on air and online. But that is all I have for you today. For more information on today's top headlines, you can watch us nightly at 5 6 and 11 on channel 11 of course and to keep getting these updates make sure you like the video and you hit subscribe you'll get a little alert to your phone whenever we hop on here but with all of that being said i hope you had a great start to your week and you continue to have a happy monday